how to look at some much more complex geometry, some scenes and different materials, including opaque materials and glass materials. So I'm going to select my base geometry here, and I'm going to go back into Honeybee and make a little geometry container for that. And I'm going to set multiple geometries so that all that geometry is contained there. And we're going to hook up this geometry into the additional rad files. But first, we need to make uh, this geometry into a radiance file. And we're going to use something called mesh to rad, this component right here. And we're going to feed in this geometry into the mesh. And we're going to take, the, take these material files and the radiance file and put them into the additional rad file. Uh, we can do this individually. Or what I like to do is to create a merge component and tuck these in like this and then this like that. So now we need a, a radiance material. And we can still use the default materials that we, that we um, had from over here that are part of the radiance library. I want to show you how to make a, um, a custom material. And the, uh, Grasshopper makes this, or Honeybee makes this really easy. This is kind of wonderful. Um, it has this list of different materials. We have glass materials, opaque materials. Um, we're going to, in this class, I'd like us to just focus on opaque and um, glass materials. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit about trans materials too. But uh, please stay away from mirrors and metals and BSDFs for now. And uh, perhaps later in the semester, we can come back to those. Um, they have the potential to be complex and very processor intensive. So let's set a material uh, by color and um, let me just move these over so we can see everything. What we're going to want to do is plug the rad material into rad material here and we need to give this a name. So I'm going to just call this, I usually call it by the um, reflectance value. So 60 R uh, and gray, in this case, no spaces. So I'm going to call that that. And then I'm going to make a color using color swatch there. And I'm going to pick a gray that has a value of 60. And that should correspond to a 60% reflectance. We can test this by taking a panel and looking at what the average reflectance is. And this is 61%. It's a little bit more than 60. So, uh, oh, because this somehow got moved. So there, 60%. And um, if we were going to go with a green color, we could shift this over to green and use this um, reflectance to see what the corresponding value would need to be in order to achieve a certain reflectance. Because uh, when you get into mixing RGB, it's less, um, it's, it's not as easy to see what the reflectance would be. With grayscale, it's very easy. We'll go back to grayscale here and uh, get our 60% value. Okay, uh, for roughness and specularity, this is how, obviously how rough the material is and how specular the material is, how mirror-like it is, um, we're going to keep this as a diffuse Lambertian surface. So we'll keep these as default settings. And we should be able to see the radiance definition. If we look right here, you can see these five numbers are the RGB roughness and specularity. And that's what's feeding into this file here. The working directory, we can set to the same working directory we had before. For the rad file name, we want to have a unique name that, um, that is a good identifier for this, for this um, geometry. So this is the base geometry for our museum. I'm going to put it, that in there. And then we can write the rad file using a Boolean toggle. And this will... Um, press true, it will um, send a script that will write the mesh associated with these to, uh, to this a folder. And I want to show you that folder. So this is 
important for later. So we have uh, the test 01 that we did before and just added this base folder. Um, and inside here are the um, files that we just wrote. So there's the material file, the a rad file, and then the material base uh, as a rad file. The OBJ is the um, geometry export, and the BAT is a batch file that is a script. So every time that you, um, you need to write a new uh, geometry, you'll, or if you change your folder, you need to re-export the meshes. Alternatively, and you'll see this is set up in the other file, what we did here is I've exported all of these meshes here. This is now set to null because all of these are false by default. But if you click true and it populates this, then you can click on here and press copy data and then um, paste it into a panel. So, and which is what I've done here. So now this panel has this path permanently in this and I can now work uh, and I don't have to come back another time if I'm, I'm working on a different iteration, I can use the same base geometry from this file path. And this data stream is hooked up to that additional RAD results or additional RAD files. So that's the way to get more complex geometry. And I can show you what that looks like by running this. So now instead of just the entry, we should have um, all this base geometry. And it'll take a little bit longer to run. And this is what it looks like. So we get um, a nice a rendering just of that base geometry. And so we can assign that geometry any material. We can um, change different materials, and all we have to do is take this uh, component, our, our one material, and copy it uh, several times in order to uh, make, make new materials, or lots of materials. So uh, I could take, take this and, um, and copy it down and then keep using my merge tool. Actually, I'm gonna turn my right rad off there and add in there. And now if I wanted to say, include my, um, furniture, my gallery furniture, select sublayer objects. So I'm gonna select all those guys. I can go back and redefine that geometry. And um, actually that just wrote the mesh already. Um, I'm gonna set that to false and let's change this to red. So just so you can see this. And don't forget to change this name. It's gotta be unique with no spaces. And the same for this. So this is a 26% reflective red. And I'm gonna write this mesh. And now we're ready to run this again. Hit the toggle and got some screens popping up here. On my other monitor. And it's done. Notice this turned orange. We'll come back to that in a second. But for now, we've got a rendering with our base geometry over here, our 60% uh, gray walls here, and our red furniture inside the gallery. So now why did this turn orange? If you click on this little thing, it uh, gives you one warning. Um, to see all the warnings, you can open up a, a um, panel and you can see it's an image-based simulation uh, where the directory is and um, where the previous results were copied to. And then it says, R picked warning non-planar vertex for polygon object 130 point blah, blah, blah. So from time to time, you'll see this occurring, particularly when um, you have very fine meshes. And my rule of thumb for this is don't worry about this as long as your renderings come out okay. If you're missing a lot of surfaces, um, say this uh, Calder uh, sculpture was no longer there or there was a big hole in it, 
then in all likelihood, one of these non-planar vertices was the problem. And you might need to go back and remake that geometry. Um, as it stands, this particular one could be a very, very, very small portion of any of this. So uh, I wouldn't worry about it. So the last thing I want to teach you how to do is to make a glass material. We've looked at two different opaque materials. Um, in order to make glass, um, actually, I don't think I even have any glass defined in my model right now. Let's make a huge glass skylight. And to do that, I'm going to make a new set of layers in Rhino. And I'm going to include a skylight in that. And just so we can see this a little better, I'm going to make this green. And importantly, any transparent or translucent surfaces must be two-dimensional. So here's a two-dimensional surface. I'm going to put that on that skylight layer just so I can find it layer, later. And I'm going to highlight it. So when I come back to Grasshopper, I can make another geometry bucket and set one geometry. And now that is set. And I'm going to need to hook up to a, a mesh to rad. Um, so I'm going to turn the toggle off first, and then I'm going to copy um, these three components. I'm going to plug in the material file and the radiance file into my merge component. I'm going to call this a skylight. And I'm going to take my geometry and put it into the mesh there. So now for the uh, rad material, we need a glass material or a transparent material. So I'm going to come over to Honeybee and go to this drop down menu where you can see there's a whole bunch of materials, including glass there. And defining glass is pretty easy. All you have to do is let's hook up a panel to the average transmission. Let's give this a name. I'll call it sky glass for my skylights. And we're going to find this primarily with a color. So I'm going to take a color swatch. I'm going to hook it up here. And you can see that white is an average transmission transmittance of 1.0 or 100%. Uh, and that equals um, a totally saturated value. And as you come down, you'll notice that this changes accordingly. So if I wanted to have a glass with a slightly green hue, um, but one that was in the 50 to 60% transmission range, I would define it like this and accept and we're done. The refractive index um, for glass is, um, is 1.52 and that's what this is set at as a default. If you want to use other types of um, materials like plastics, you can look up the refractive index and, and then um, import them into here. So lastly, the radiance material gets hooked up into there and we need to write this material and make sure that this one's written as well. There it is. So this might be a little bit difficult to see, but you can, you can see that this is uh, d looking into a darker space than this one here, and that's because of that glass that we put over the top. If uh, I suppose we could make this test a little bit more uh, legible by, let's go and, and have a red glass and write that there. So the, the red glass is transmissive. You can see through it, uh, but um, but it, it is, it's tinted and it's, it yields a color. So that's a, uh, an overview of Honeybee um, daylighting materials, geometry, simulation parameters, and um, post-processing. In the next video, I will go over electric lighting. Thank you.